Hey guys, welcome back to the Rough Cuts Garage. Today we're going to be installing an upgraded steering box mounting plate on our first gen Cummins. All right, so the parts that we're going to be using today is a 1972 to 1993 Dodge Ram truck steering box mount plate. That's this plate here. This is from vintage truck and 4x4.com. Link will be in the description below. This is only applicable to the 4x4 trucks as the uh, 4x4 or W series trucks have a, an adapter plate that is prone to cracking over time since it's a thinner metal. So the bracket itself is very well made. Um, the parts and the metal on it are very thick. Uh, it's 3 8 inch thick metal uh, for the plate itself. And the welds you can see here are really nice. The one thing to note though is that this bracket does not come pre-painted. I painted this with uh, flat black trim clad just to protect it from rusting. So the hardware that it comes with, these are grade 10 Allen head bolts. And that's to go through these four ports here. There's two long ones for the extended reach to get to your steering box. And then they send um, 9 16 grade eight bolts along with it uh, that go through these ports here. The thing that I have on my truck already is a Dodge Connection steering brace, and that's to prevent the frame from twisting when you activate the steering. So I'm not sure if these bolts will be long enough because if they're the same length as the factory bolts that are on there already, um, they will not be long enough. So I elected to grab some fine thread grade eight bolts with a lock washer. These ones are an inch and a half, and these ones are two inches long. So right down here, we got the steering box right here. And that on the four wheel drive trucks is attached to a plate right here. And that's an adapter plate um, to go on the uh, between the box and the frame. So here's the steering brace and that prevents the frame from twisting with the steering box movement. Okay, so up underneath here, whether you have a steering brace or not, you will have one bolt here, one bolt there, and then one bolt right up there. So on the inside here, the size is 7 8 and on the outside it's 13 16 So I've got the steering box down a bit. Just be careful of the uh, the lines at the top. There's a few hard lines that go to some flex lines, some flex hose. So uh, just be careful of that. So this bolt here is actually like press fit into the bottom of this plate. So I've got the steering box shifted all the way over. And you can see that we're not pinching, we're not pinching those power steering lines there. So I've got it supported with a piece of wire just up through the fender here, and then uh, we'll have access in the back of that plate to get the bolts off. Five eighths bolts on the back of the steering box. So we got that last bolt off and we got the plate down. Let's go inspect it. Okay, so here's the vintage 4x4 plate and here's the stock plate. So mine hasn't shown any signs of wear or cracking yet. Um, I suspect it's because my vehicle has relatively low kilometers compared to some of the first gens out there. 
Um, but you can just see here in comparison to the vintage 4x4 plate, like how thick the metal is on this plate versus the stock plate. And uh, no wonder over time that these things will fatigue out and crack on you. So you can see here, the vintage 4x4 plate matches up quite nicely with the stock plate. And then you can see the design here on the bottom where it extends out and this is where your steering box will rest. So one thing I noticed, I was trying out these bolts for size on the plate and they don't actually fit through the hole. So I'm gonna have to take a drill bit and widen out these holes slightly. Alright, the paint's now dry on the holes here that we widened out, so we're going to now put the bracket on the steering box. So here's the new bracket. And there's going to be like a smaller cutout and a larger cutout. The smaller cutout goes in the bottom and it lines up like that. These bolts here, there's going to be two that are shorter and two that are longer. The longer ones obviously go on top and the shorter ones in the bottom. And these get torqued down to 130 foot-pounds. Okay, so before I start tightening the Allen bolts, I'm going to take my one of my two-inch bolts uh, with the fine thread and a washer, and I'm going to come and put it through the most forward hole here on the plate itself um, because once I tighten down those allen bolts it's going to be very difficult to get the this bolt through the forward hole again. Unfortunately I don't have an actual socket with a 3 8 allen on it um, so I'm just going to have to do it by hand with this allen key. Um, they are supposed to be torqued down to 130 foot-pounds, so I'm going to just try and reef on them as much as I possibly can. Okay, so I'm just using this wrench, it's kind of a cheater bar, just to get it nice and tight. just sprayed some rust check on the back of the plate and the frame that way when they're sandwiched together uh, it's going to inhibit rust from forming we got the plate up here with the three two inch fine thread grade 8 bolts and now you can see up here We've got plenty of bolts still protruding through. So for those of you that are gonna also have a uh, steering brace, um, you're gonna need to get longer bolts than the ones that come with the uh, steering box plate. These bolts need to be tightened down to 165 foot-pounds. All right, so here's the finished product. And you can see how beefy that plate is. That's awesome. We can, uh, I'll throw the wheel back on, take the truck back down uh, to the ground and then uh, I'll show you footage of turning the steering column and then seeing how much it flexes, if at all, really.
All right, so let's clean up and we'll go for a test drive and I'll let you know how it feels while driving.